The federal lockout tagout standard, published by OSHA in 1989, was designed to prevent injuries and death caused by accidental startup of equipment during maintenance or servicing. OSHA estimates the lockout tagout standard saves 122 lives and prevents 28,000 lost workday injuries each year. Therefore, it's likely that well over 800 lives have been saved since the standard went into effect. That's more than 800 people who still come home to their families, friends, and loved ones. People who are still there for the ones who depend upon them. The lockout tagout standard works. It saves lives. Yet unfortunate tragedies do still occur, but many of them could be prevented if the lockout standard is applied correctly. Today's safety topic provides a review of the lockout tagout standard. Remember, the standard can only work if it's used correctly every time. The lockout tagout standard requires that hazardous energy sources be isolated and rendered inoperative before maintenance or servicing can begin. These energy sources include electrical, pneumatic, hydraulic, mechanical, thermal, chemical, and the force of gravity. It is important to remember that all of the energy sources must be isolated and rendered inoperative. There may be more than one. Overlooking a single energy source has proved fatal on several occasions. In order to isolate and render inoperative an energy source, an energy isolating device must be locked in place or, in certain cases, labeled with a tag warning against the startup of equipment until servicing is finished. Stored energy sources, such as pressure, springs, electricity contained in capacitors, must be released or otherwise rendered safe before servicing the equipment. Every person who will be working on the equipment applies a lock or a tag to each energy isolating device. For complex equipment with many energy sources, a group lockout is permitted. After locks are applied, an attempt to restart the equipment must be made to verify the equipment cannot be restarted before servicing begins. After servicing, each person who placed a lock or a tag must remove it before the equipment is started. OSHA requires three basic elements in a lockout tagout program. These are training, written procedures, and inspections. Training is required for two types of people, authorized employees and affected employees. Authorized employees are people who do the maintenance or servicing work. They are the people who actually perform the lockout tagout. Affected employees are people who may be affected by or work near the equipment which is locked or tagged out. Affected employees are not permitted to perform servicing or maintenance work which requires a lockout or tagout. Written procedures detailing the lockout tagout procedures are required for equipment having two or more energy sources. Written procedures communicate important information to persons performing the lockout tagout. Procedures identify energy sources, provide step-by-step -step instructions for locking or tagging out energy, releasing stored energy, and verifying the equipment cannot be restarted after lockout is applied. These three elements of the lockout tagout standard work together to keep you safe. Lockout tagout saves lives and prevents injuries if procedures are followed consistently and correctly. Remember, never take a shortcut when it comes to your safety, especially when you're working with hazardous energy sources. using Powtoon.